I have to know the formula for student success and retention in order to be successful. I have to have done that before. I have to know what needs to be done. But I also need to be present with the students in my office now and have a plan for semester long success. And so we talk about this in terms of predicted interventions. I know that my students who haven't picked their major yet, I need to walk them through a process. We've got to talk about decision-making. We've got to talk about personalities. These are the set steps that we're going to walk through over the next five weeks. When a student comes in to see me though, I'm not telling them, hey, these are the five things we're going to do. I'm looking at them and listening to them. Like you and I were talking about last time, like you are a person, you are bringing your whole self to me. And I want to be present with you. Um, even in the context of, I have a plan for us that we're going to walk through over the next couple of weeks as we're pursuing this thing. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. It is June 22nd. Hi, Anthony. Hello, how are you, my friend? Good, you're in a different place than normal today. I'm in an office um, in, uh, where am I? Long Beach, California. <laughs> and I'm actually keeping my voice a little down because I'm in an all enclosed glass office and there's other people outside so I don't know what they can hear and not hear so I'm trying not to yell and be my Brooklyn self Ooh. so uh, a little bit more uh, my, we'll my horse will be a little, bit, a little bit lower today mm -hmm. but yeah so we have meetings right after uh, at two o'clock today in, uh, in Long Beach so I flew in from Vegas this morning and here I am oh my goodness well thank you for spending time with us um, today we are talking about something that you uh, know a lot about which is dedication to your goals and so we're at that part in Kintsugi where it's like, okay, you need to get concentrating and focused on what you're doing. And so that's what we're going to unpack a little bit today. Um, thank you to everyone who's joining us and listening to us. Please connect to us um, on taplink.cc slash various resources. Lots of ways for you to uh, interact with us there. Um, I have some pictures. And Anthony, uh -oh. we, have a, we have a bunch of people who have started to, to um, join us on podcast. And so I have to describe these pictures. So I've okay. got to get better at describing them. So here's the first one. You posted this one on Father's Day. <laughs> and you are, first of all, where are you? Is this Japan? Vietnam. This is Vietnam. Okay. And you are mm -hmm. in some martial arts outfit. Yes, we, um, we were, they were training me to do something. I don't remember exactly. It was, it was very, it was very specific to the region of Vietnam. And, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the video that I posted a couple of years ago where I actually did a backflip off of the tree. No. Yeah. I've run up the tree and I did a backflip and, uh, it's probably the coolest thing I've ever did. And then I went into a whole martial arts thing that everybody thought I, I had pre-programmed, but I didn't, it was just my adrenaline, but it looked like I was training for a long time. It was one of those moments. So I don't know, when I was thinking about what I want to say for Father's Day, I just saw that picture and I was like, I know I'm not with my kids, but I was with my kids, but I just said, let me just post that one. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's a very, I think it's a good Father's Day um, picture. Did you have a good Father's Day? I did. My daughter wrote me a letter that made me cry and it's still making me cry. Good. That she said I was her favorite person. She said I was her favorite person. That's, that's that what is you live high for. praise. That's what you live for. Yeah. That's great. I'm glad you had a good Father's Day. Also, um, this picture that you recently posted, is this a spa? <laughs> yes, it is. It, it, we were in Costa Rica. And my producer, uh, her, her whole life was like complete as soon as she was able to hold the schlock. She's Aww. like, I literally lived my whole life to hold the schlock. I said, okay. Rachel Elam just said that's her favorite animal. <laughs> really? I had no idea. Yeah. Really? Well, yeah, she, 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 Grace is her name and she was so excited. It was actually, I think that was the last scene uh, of television I have shot. So that was about two and a half years ago. So that was the last time I was actually uh, shooting a TV show. That, that, wow. that may have been my last scene. Yeah. That's amazing. I just was watching um, Extreme Hotel today where you had to eat a piranha tooth, which good on you, Anthony. Matt and I, I was for like I, actually that was the show that was the show that this picture was taken I think oh really was, I think that was the show yeah 
Yeah, that was, um, you started with just piranha, which you were like, okay. And then they gave you an eyeball, which you were like, mm-hmm. okay. And then they gave you a piranha tooth to which and you were I, like. I was that happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could sense I was, that it was not your most favorite thing. I was not happy. Um. Okay, well, you know that yesterday was my birthday because you called me. Yes. This is a picture of my daughter and you. <laughs> You have to know that she worked very hard on both Matt and my husband to convince them to call you and invite you to my birthday party. (laughs) So why didn't you? (laughs) She was like, Anthony would be a great present for mom. You need to get him to come to the party. If we can go to New York to see him, he can come to Abilene. And they both were like, he's got some things going on. So... (laughs) Well, I would love to with some notice. Uh, <laughs> maybe time. I could make that happen. <laughs> Next time. On your, 20, on your 22nd birthday. Yes, it was a great 22nd birthday. <laughs> okay, I have 20 questions, 19 questions for you. Are you ready? I can't wait. Okay. What is your favorite breakfast food? Hmm. My favorite? Uh, 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 English muffin, well done with butter. Ooh, that's, I really love English muffins. Okay. When is the last time you saw a monkey? Oh my God. Um, Listen, I've been asking you 20 questions for like a year. (laughs) The last time I saw a monkey, I was in Peru. Okay, good. Um, What is your favorite way to eat potatoes? Um, um, Baked potato. Okay. Name one thing in the trunk of your car right now. Um, a baseball bat. Okay. I I'm play going. softball. Okay, okay. That made me a little nervous, but all right. Uh, do you work out to music? No. What are you really terrible at? Singing. What would your last meal be? Mashed potato, a really good steak, uh, a Coke and probably carrot cake. Okay. Um, do you play video games? Uh, no, unless it's a UFC, only MMA UFC. That's the only okay. video game I play. Um, do you have a theme song? My way, Sinatra. Okay. Do you Does that make sense? Go- <laughs> yeah, yes, it's a good fit. I believe, listen, I don't, I don't not believe in anything. Oh, okay. So that's like, maybe. It's, listen everything's possible you know okay if a pandemic can shut down the world anything's possible true would you rather be too hot or too cold oh too cold what is a topic that you could talk about for hours gratefulness do you believe in aliens potentially Uh, anything's possible anything's possible okay what is something that i don't know about you um, I was a high school wrestler. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Do you sleep with socks on? What's that? Do you sleep with socks on? No. No. Um, do you play any instruments? Mm, no. Do you like to cook? Yes. Okay. And I lastly, don't cook, no, but I like to cook. Lastly, when you put your shoes and socks on, do you put on a sock, a shoe, a sock, a shoe, or do you put on two socks and two shoes? <laughs> I put on my shoe, then my sock. No, I put on a sock, a sock, and a shoe, and a shoe, and a shoe. Okay. All right. There. I learned something new. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Man, <laughs> we're, we're really... We're getting to the bottom of the barrel. (laughs) Getting to the bottom of the barrel. Okay, so I want to do the State of the Union. We're going to talk about fall 2021 and then talking about centering and concentrating and how we're going to set our new goals. So let me talk about the State of the Union. Did you hear the big news today is that the Supreme Court gave a unanimous victory to Division I college athletes that basically says that... um, the NCAA is violating an antitrust law by restricting athletes from getting payments for things like internships or musical instruments. So what they're, yeah. So what they're saying is 
It's horizontal price fixing in a market where NCAA exercises monopoly control, which I think is a really interesting take, like antitrust in terms of how we're treating our athletes. So that is going to be really interesting to see. So can they, so they, can they get paid for playing a sport? Not yet. So this is like a narrow victory for them. And then they have these other suits in the works about, I think, I think in this suit was included that they can be paid for the use of their name or their likeness. Um, you know, cause a lot of times like they're in video games or they're selling stuff, merchandise with these kids names and faces and they don't make any money off of it. So right. it's, it's developing. Yeah. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens in that deal. Um, also, great article in Inside Higher Ed called How COVID Damaged Student Success. A couple of data pieces that come out of this. Nearly half of the students surveyed would rate the value of their education this year as fair or poor, which again, we're not confused about, but it is something that the higher education industry is going to have to recover from. Um, about a quarter of freshmen reported that they felt very un unprepared for college and then 35% said somewhat unprepared. I don't love that stat because I think freshmen in general feel unprepared. When you went to college, did you feel prepared? No, and I think it, it comes down to you're in a, in most cases, you're in an environment where everything is controlled for you and you're told what to do and what you can't do. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, it here's all the freedoms of the world. And so I think you're probably less prepared for being in the world than they are for college. So yeah. I think when they're answering that, they're probably answering it. Are you ready to be an adult? <laughs> yeah, right. Which I don't really know anyone who's like, yes. Sign me up for that. I'm totally ready. To the, the, the other day, my daughter and her boyfriend got stuck on the side of the highway and I had to go save them on um, uh, Father's Day. And I pulled up and I said, so how's adulting? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's terrible. This is terrible. <laughs> um, okay, two more pieces that came out of this. So this is really interesting regarding cheating online on in online courses. 47% of students say that it's relatively common to cheat in online courses, which is not surprising. Um, but I, again, think in terms of academic integrity, it's something that we're gonna have to recover from if you have students who have kind of gotten used to taking some shortcuts if they're taking online classes. And then this one is interesting to me. Only one in five students remember receiving a nudge or a reminder from their college about course activity and college business deadlines. So that one's tricky because just because they don't remember that it happened doesn't mean schools weren't doing it. Right. Um, but right now is the time where you should be nudging and reminding your students about enrolling for fall if they have not already enrolled. So this is a time. Right, but, but again, the, the fine nudging, right? An email, is that nudging? Right. A call, is right. that nudging? Is it like 27 times in class we told you? Is it 27 emails we sent you? So I, you know, my daughter said, well, I didn't know that. I was like, well, did you get an email? I don't know. We'll go look for the email. <laughs> right. Well, right. the email's right there. Yeah, but nobody called me. My president didn't tell me. I was like, are they supposed to like, again, it's that, it's like you're getting ready for adulthood. So you can't overly nudge, you know? Yeah, you have to give them independence and autonomy, but also we need to try to communicate. And I think maybe the channel is the question, right? Like what is the right channel to communicate so that they hear it? Because I don't know that college students are reading emails these days. I don't think they read emails. Uh, I barely read emails. So yeah. if you, everybody knows you text me, you get my attention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, also, did you see this? Uh, Mackenzie Scott has given another round of gifts yes. to schools. Mm -hmm. So $2.7 mm -hmm. billion dollars to research universities, HBCUs and community colleges. She gave money to Amarillo College, which is um, a school here in Texas. We love their president. He does a great job of closing the equity gap and serving underserved students. And so he got, I think $15 million to help them with student success. So that wow. is really exciting. How fun to give away that much money. I told you the college I'm working with in Florida is Indian River State College got $43 million. And that's one of the reasons we're doing the hospitality school it's, and program because of her, her, her generosity. And, you know, on one hand, everybody's like, oh, she's so generous. But on the other hand, what are you going to do with all that money? Yeah. I mean, you I leave it like, to your kids, you might as well just get them a full-time psychiatrist. Right. 
that's true. I feel like that's what Bill Gates decided a couple of years ago where he was like, I just need to give this money away because what, what am I going to do with that? One time I, I heard an interview with him where they were like, how do you understand how much money you have? And he said, the only way I can understand it is there's literally nothing in the world I cannot buy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's wow. pretty wealthy. That's, um, <laughs> wow. That's, I never even thought of uh, money in terms of like, there's nothing I can't buy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And my last state of the union is, did you hear about this girl, Alina Wicker? She just started her journey through higher education at Arizona State University online. She's 12. She just got a full ride. Um, let me read you what she's majoring in. Oh boy. Wait, Ast I have to Google it. Do I have to Google it? Yes. Astronomical and planetary science and chemistry in Arizona State School of Earth and Space Exploration. If she, so she's pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering and eventually she wants to go to NASA. She'll be 16 if she stays on track and graduates. So she'll be done with college by the time she's 16. So she'll be an astronaut by the time she's 22. Yeah, she's been pursuing this goal since she was four um, and she loves Lego. She just put together a, a Taj Mahal that had 6,000 Lego pieces. Okay, I still can't pass out of it. I can barely put two Lego pieces together and that's not, that's for real. My daughter Listen, and my husband are very good at Legos and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand these. Your, your head's not a Lego head. My, I do not have a Lego head. That is for sure. All right. Well, that's the state of the union. <laughs> that's fantastic. But they, it's just, you know, some people are just born with that. I mean, I would imagine that if she doesn't challenge that brain, her, she'll, her brain will explode. Yeah, for sure. And I just, I think it's so admirable, her parents who notice this giftedness and just continue to feed that and put her in a place mm -hmm. where she can be successful. I think it's amazing. So that mm -hmm. means as long as it, as long as it's done with her effort and her want, not theirs. Yeah. As long as they're not being stage mom and dad. Yeah. Because you know, those families and that's not a healthy, that's not healthy. So. Not at all. Okay. So let's talk about where we are with Kintsugi today. We are at the place where we are going to center and concentrate. And this is really about you remember we talked about everything is broken and then we're going to fix it. And then we have this rest time where we're taking the summer to kind of um, regain our sense of self and have some peace and all of those sorts of things. Well, now we're at the place where we're starting to paint on the, the um, lacquer for this thing that has been broken. And so the good news is um, Matt and I talked last week about fall 2021 and how you're gonna have a different mix of people, people who've had different experiences. You're gonna have students that have come from homes where they were really significantly COVID impacted. You have faculty who are having um, lots of different experiences. The thing about uh, that I wanna talk about for fall 2021 today is that we are at the place of the academic year where people are starting to set goals for the fall. So you're thinking about your new initiatives, what the fall is gonna look like, what are the measurements that you're going to be looking for? I don't know about you, Anthony, but I'm thrilled to be in a place where we can set some goals because it has felt like we're so windswept and we don't know what's coming that it's been really hard to put a target and say, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Our number one priority was, do we have enough toilet paper? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, 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 so it's great to set goals as how much, how much uh, we have in the refrigerator and how, how many rolls of toilet paper we have. Yeah, that's what our brains were being used for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. And you yeah. know, on one hand, it was like, okay, that's all I have to think about. There's nothing else I have to think about. Okay, you know, unfortunately, the thing we had to think about was, you know, is everyone going to die? Healthy but if it was more, it was more like, hey, everybody's going to be okay. Just take a, a year of time out. I think we'll all be like, cool. Yeah, right. That's, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So I, um, I think in this process, as we've talked about, you've had rest, you've stopped, you've taken a minute. Now we're looking at the new things that are coming. And I think that we need to be reminded of the practice of setting goals because we really have not done it. I, I was saying last week, so many of us are out of the practice of socialization. We're not used to seeing people and small talking and asking questions and that sort of thing. But the same thing is true about goals. We just have not used that muscle in so long. Um, 
And really, a lot of people's goals have changed. If you look at the unemployment in this country, it's like we don't really have an unemployment problem. We have I don't want to work problem. Yeah. And people can blame uh, the, the the government for, for, for having a surplus and helping people uh, the $300 a, a week now. Um, that's not really the real issue. I really don't believe that's the real issue. I think the real issue is people setting new goals. And they, they, their goals are, um, I don't really want to work for, you, for anyone else. I've kind of been in my house. I figured it out. Uh, there's there's been more businesses started in the first six months of this year than all of 2019. So before wow. the pandemic. So, yeah. So there was more um, uh, licenses given to businesses, I think 2.5 million for new businesses. That's more than 2019. So I think people are just. You know, there one. I think the whole uh, hospitality and service industry. I think that's been a problem with it, where they've been uh, underserved from a wage standpoint. Now yeah. they're all pushing back, and you're seeing twenty twenty five dollars an hour, um, and people just they're 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 doing their own thing. And I think so. They are they're setting goals, uh, and they're they they've been freed from uh, having to think of well, what's my next job? So yeah. it's very interesting. It is very interesting, and I think you and I talked in the very beginning about how for young adults, so often there's this lockstep, like then you go to college, then you get a job, then you do this, then you do this, Mm -hmm. then you do this. And I think what's happened over the last year is that's broken. And when that breaks, you then have all these possibilities. You're like, oh, well, I could start my own business. I could do this thing. I could do this thing. I I can order my life in the way that I want to, as opposed to just being pushed along, right? Right. And then I think also, whereas before it was like, well, should I take the risk? And after the pandemic, it's like, wow, why wouldn't I take the risk? You know, the, the yeah. pandemic shut everything down and really proved to me that life is fleeting. Yeah, that's interesting. I was just reading something the other day about especially young people saying, you know, I don't want to, I don't like this idea that I'm just going to work for the next 40 years and then be done. I'm going to, I need to have some meaning. And like some really significant something in my life. Um, yeah, you know, l- listen, I, 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 in, in everything I've done when I, when I decide to leave the hotel business, uh, the normal way of doing the hotel business as general manager, even though I loved it and every day was different and I've learned and I've met so many people, I was like, my journey since that day has been so abnormal and it's always different. And it's, it's, you know, it's stressful if, if I let it be stressful. But like I said, I could talk all day about gratefulness because like this morning, if you look at my day, you know, I had a pretty busy day. I woke up at 5.30 a.m. in a beautiful room, in a beautiful hotel. They sent me a driver. I got on a plane in business class. I, they sent me a driver. I'm now in a really beautiful office. I'm talking to beautiful people. And I have some challenging meetings ahead of me today and I'm flying back to uh, uh, um, Vegas and I have a very, very busy day tomorrow. And I'm like, wow, how lucky am I? So as stressful as some things are and some things are going the wrong way in business, that's okay because yeah. I have the opportunity for it to go the wrong way. Yeah. If, if, I'm not in the, if I'm not in the game, if I'm not on the field, I don't have the opportunity to fail. I, yeah, I like that because I think it gets at the heart of your goals have to be fulfilling to you. And so the, the day that you just described for many people, they would be like, that's overwhelming. I don't want that. That's right. That's why you didn't pursue those things because ending up in that kind of life is not a thing you want. Right. Whereas right. you've been really relentless about like, I'm going to pursue good things and the right things so that I end up in the place that I want to be so that I can have opportunities that I want. Yeah, I can't build Legos. I got I don't have a Lego head either. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> don't put me in that life. That's not going to go great. Um, no. Also, you, so I was telling Matt this morning, all of my favorite people, although they have different goals, maybe it's NASA, maybe it's hotel business, maybe it's higher education. All of my favorite people as the overarching goal for their life, they have the same thing in common, which is this relentless striving for excellence, right? I just want to be great at whatever the thing is. And I love- Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, finish your thought. Just something funny happened last night that I'll tell you about, go ahead. I just love that because because it, it does help order everything you're doing. 
when you're like, I don't want to be mediocre. I don't want to do a bad job. I want to show up whatever the thing is every time. And I want to just relentlessly pursue being great at whatever the thing is. It changes your life. It, 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 it changes your life. And, and it just, it, it, for me, I'm just talking for me. For me personally, when I see other people achieving things that are so hard, I literally get more emotional when I see it for them than I even for myself. Like what I do is like, okay, it's almost like I, like I have high expectations for myself. So I don't give myself a break, right? So yeah. it's like where most of us overachievers do. But when you see somebody like where they run a hotel or open a hotel or do something well, like the Rockway Hotel, it's open, it's doing great. I just, I can't tell you how much admiration I have for those people. Uh, 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 and I just love, like, I just, I, like I literally, people look at me and they're like, okay, Anthony, you like that thing or whatever. No, because you don't understand. Like my nephew right now, he's in he's in uh, engineering school. And every time he comes over to my house for lunch, because I got him an internship uh, close to my house, and um, he, like, I just look at him, I'm just like, I'm just so proud. Like, I, I know how hard he's working. 50% of the people in his class dropped out. And I know how hard, I just love when people really challenge themselves. On the other hand, when things like normal little things go wrong, like last time I'm sitting at the table, at a poker table and in Vegas, and uh, I asked for a drink and the lady was very nice, gave me my drink, but I went away. Another lady comes by and I wanted another drink. And I was drinking a water or a Coke. I wasn't really, I was drinking alcohol. And I said, can I have whatever I asked for? And she's, she's standing next to me with a full tray. So I look at her, I haven't said anything actually. I look at her and I'm just looking, waiting for her to, you know, acknowledge you, give, give the, give the other drinks away to the people around the table. Okay. I'm waiting for her tray to be basically empty. And I'm just sitting there and I'm not staring at her. I'm just kind of waiting and looking. And then all of a sudden, like she, my eyes look at her, she looks at me. So I'm waiting for my time to ask for the drink. And she goes, uh, I'm not giving you a drink right now because I am delivering drinks. So we're not ready for you right now. She literally said that to me. <laughs> I went like this. I was like, what? I, I, I literally wanted to get up and like just run around. And, like, what did you just say to me? Oh like, I am being so gentle and nice. And every time you give me a drink, I give you two bucks. Everybody else gives you a dollar. I'm giving two bucks or three bucks. It's like, I, I literally was in shock. I, it's still, it's still like, that it's going to bother shocking. me for, for a long time. And I was so nice to her. Like I didn't do anything wrong. And like, I was just so, I, I'm still, I can't get over it. So as much as when I see somebody doing something right, it just inspires me. Uh, when somebody's doing something wrong, like I, I think I have an emotional <laughs> reaction to, to those two extreme things more yeah. than most people. Yeah. Well, if you are committed to pursuing excellence and you see somebody who is not, it is, it is a very frustrating experience. You're just like, how is it that I'm walking around trying to do the best I can and you guys are just, you know, hanging out, so. Yeah. Um, well, it's not even that. It's, it's you're not picking up all the clues of life. It's not even about me. It's like, it's not like it has nothing to do with me. It's actually like, I don't care about me. Like I was trying to be very small in that moment. Yeah. It was like, you're like, you're not picking up life's clues. Yeah. And that's a problem because you're bringing that to your family. You're bringing that to your boss. You're bringing that to the bus driver. You're bringing yeah. that to everywhere you go. For sure. The other thing that it made me think about though, is that you, it is, I was trying to figure out like, okay, people who are pursuing this, idea of excellence. You know, Anthony, you're always saying that passion changes everything. And it's passion is the fuel that allows people to pursue excellence with vigor, right? I mean, that's what you're burning. I love this thing. I'm going to chase after it. This feeling passionate about a thing is how you're able to chase excellence. Yeah, uh, it's, it, 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 listen, I, I don't know what it is. I don't. I have no idea where it comes from with me or anyone else. I really don't know where it comes from. I don't. I would imagine it has to do a lot with how people grow up. Um, but it's, um, you know, listen, we're here for a second. So, and yeah. then we're not. Yeah. And I told you the whole, the, like I could, I could do well for the rest of my life and make as much money as possible. My daughter writing that beautiful letter to me is worth any money or any accolade I can ever get in my life because I'm here for a second. So when I'm gone, that's all she's going to have. She's going to have that memory of me. So the only thing I'm going to have when I die is people's memories of me. And if their memories are bad, then I'm going to die and I'm going to be 
it's, it's, it's a bad way. Yeah. If things are good and it doesn't matter anything, nothing else matters. And I think that's what I'm motivated by. I'm just so motivated I, by, by picking up the clues of life. Like ju- I just saw something just now and I was like, Ooh, that was interesting. And like, nobody else would have noticed that, but it, it, it hit me which <laughs> something just happened in the office. And it's just, I guess that's how I'm wired. Yeah. It's really interesting that you say that about your daughter. Cause I was thinking people who are pursuing excellence, they tend to do it in all the areas of their lives. So like, I want to be a great parent. I want to be great at business. I want to be, and it's not that that's not a thing that you get by being lazy. And it's not a thing that you get by not paying attention, right? You have great relationships with your kids because you're paying attention because you show up for them because you're, you're, in it you're in it with them it's not just uh i mean yeah i have kids and we'll see <laughs> you know we'll right see what happens. right and, and i'm seriously the reason your daughter wanted me to come to the birthday party because i'm seriously considering adopting her <laughs> yeah i'll send her to I, you for a little while <laughs> <laughs> well listen you said she 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 asked a lot of questions she, and she she never shuts off and i'm like yes i'd love it <laughs> yeah yeah you guys will be good friends good friends Okay. So I want to show you, I was thinking of this metric as we were thinking about setting goals for fall. Um, and this metric of where people get stuck. And so, so there's these two pieces there's in the middle, whether you're present focused or you're future focused, and then across the middle access, um, from left to right, there's whether you're unscheduled or you're scheduled. And so as people are practicing, creating their goals, most of the time you're happy to live one of these places and then the other ones can be a struggle. So let me just talk about this for a minute. If you think about, um, I think I have mine. This is from an assessment called Yada. And I think I have my example here. Okay, so I live in the unscheduled present, which means that if you like came into my office right now and you said, Rachel, you have to do a presentation for 80,000 people, I'd be like, okay, Like, I don't, that doesn't stress me out right now. What are we doing? That's fine. Right. Um, If you told me in six months, I have to do a presentation for 80,000 people. I'm very stressed about it. I'm going to dread it the whole way. I'm going to be like, oh my goodness, this is going to be really, really hard. Right. So I think you you and I are the same person. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, Like right now, just tell me the thing and we'll get it done. Um, Whereas you think about other people who, if I sprang that on them, that would be a total nightmare for them. But they, if they could plan every single day between now and the six months, they would feel happy about it. Right. Well, this is, that's crazy. I never thought of it that way. This is really hard because I get, so I'm, I'm going to tell you about how Matt hired me to be a career counselor. He hired me to do another job. And then there was some turnover in the office and he came to me and he's like, Hey, will you change your job to be a career counselor? And I was like, no, I don't know about that. Like every day for the rest of my life, I have to do this thing. I don't know. I'm that. I don't know. And he said, well, could you do it for three months? And I was like, sure. And then I did it for five years. Right. Because I was just like, as long as I don't have this pressure of forever, I can manage the every day, do it right now. Every day, do it right now. You have Mm -hmm. other people who don't want to every day do it right now. They want to think about it and talk about what's going to happen in the future, right? And the thing is, Anthony, I think somewhere in there is the right balance, which is like do things today to achieve your goals in the context of this future plan, which I think is a great summary of what you do on Hotel Impossible every time. Because you show up and you meet with the people and you do present unstructured. What's happening? What's going on? I'm going to walk around. I'm going to figure out what's the, what the issue is. But then you have this plan, which is like, you have to be clean. You have to be safe. You have to be profitable. We are going to work right now to execute that plan for the future. It's such a nice marrying of the two kind of ways that you can be in, in life. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. It's like going into a restaurant and the waiter saying, here's the menu. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to look at this. I'm going to come back next Sunday and I'm going to tell you what I want. (laughs) Or you're going to look at the menu and you're like, all right, I'll have this, right? It's like, so so the menu's in front of you. I'm there now to help you. You want You want me to take that order next Sunday, you want to take it now. Right. And, uh, and again, I'm dealing with stuff in business right now that there's two, there's two trains of thought. And one, I never thought about it until you said it. One is, uh, give me six months to think about it and we'll execute. And, you know, I'm more like, um, yeah, we can execute in 30 seconds. We're good. 
Right. Um, right. And I just think that that's about confidence and also the an analysis um, of all the things you've done prior. So you yes. immediately can make a decision like that. So you know that you can get in front of 80,000 people right now yeah. because you know you, you've had the experience and the preparation to do it. That anxiety of the 80,000 people is because, at least in my mind, what, what, what happens like, like every single day, I have to allocate five minutes or 10 minutes or an hour to get ready for that because I don't want to screw it up because I had six months and I don't want to allocate five minutes of my life every day thinking about one thing. I'd rather you just hit me and let me go. That's the yeah. same reason with the way I do keynote speeches. Like I don't, we sign a contract and I don't think about it until basically two, three days before I get on the stage. Yeah. Because if I think about it for, for that six months, I'll lose my mind. So it's, that's a great example of how you need team members who are providing this other piece. So one of the reasons I love working with Rachel Elam is because she's future planned. So when I say like, hey, this is what I wanna do. And then I don't think about it again. And she's like, I'm managing all of the things that have to happen. She likes working with me because she's like, I've been thinking about this thing for three weeks. Should we do it? And I'm like, yes, let's do it right now. I'm gonna call the person right now. Here's what we're gonna do, right? So having those balances where you say, I, I get stuck when I'm making goals. When you tell me it's a long haul, I want to do it now. Other people get stuck when you say we need to make the decision now. And they're like, no, I need to think through it. And I want, I want to devote five minutes every day in that place. And so finding your team members who can work um, with you to set up those goals. And I can't stress enough. I've just have been thinking so much about what you said is exactly right. The, I have to know the formula for student success and retention in order to be successful. I have to have done that before. I have to know what needs to be done. But I also need to be present with the students in my office now and have a plan for semester long success. And so we talk about this in terms of predicted interventions. I know that my students who haven't picked their major yet I need to walk them through a process. We've got to talk about decision-making. We've got to talk about personalities. These are the set steps that we're going to walk through over the next five weeks. When a student comes in to see me though, I'm not telling them, hey, these are the five things we're going to do. I'm looking at them and listening to them like you and I were talking about last time. Like you are a person, you are bringing your whole self to me and I want to be present with you. Um, even in the context of, I have a plan for us that we're gonna walk through over the next couple of weeks as we're pursuing this thing. So I think that like bigger picture and then making sure that you're really present with the people who are in your, your students who are in your office is so- Well, I think what you just said, predictive intervention and in everyday life, predictive intervention is really important. And I haven't thought about it in, in, those, in that terms. So if, if your, your kids are coming home or you're going to a business meeting or it's like, I'm already prepared for my business meeting to go south or to be successful. I'm probably more prepared for it to go south because if it does go south, I have to basically intervene in that and make sure that I'm prepared to get it back on track. Uh, my daughters all came home from college. It's like, okay, I know there's going to be stress. You know, then the, as soon as they get there that weekend, there's going to be a lot of going on. Who wants to go here? Who wants to go there? So I freed myself up mentally and, and you know, just my schedule is like, I'm here. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to take you? What do you want to do? And so predictive intervention, I think, is, is, is a secret to successful people because we've already intervened into a problem that hasn't occurred yet. That's right. That's right. And if you think about for your students and the goals that you're setting, you know, like higher education experts know this is what's coming down the pike. This is when they're going to struggle. This is the time of year when they get their first test back and they're like, oh my goodness, I'm freaking out. I've never failed before. You know, all of those pieces. And so being able to say before students ever show signs of struggle, we're going to use our expertise to have the right intervention in place. It's like you and I were talking about upstream, right? It's like, who's throwing all the kids in the river that we have to go save? You absolutely have to save the kids in the river, but you also want to move up and say, hey, who is this person who's causing all of this difficulty? If we can solve it upstream, then we don't have to dwell on right. it. You know? right. And a lot of times it's the person themselves, right? Because they're either overthinking it, they're overstudying, they're, they're, so they're, they're stressed out and they're, they're just they're failing because they're just stressed out and they're just not being able to, to be effective 
or they're not thinking about it, they're cramming, they're not paying attention, and they're, now they've, they've seen that they're going to fail a class, and now they've gotten stressed. So, you know, I think as you get older, and that's why we're, you know, we get better at this stuff when you get older, you know, now at, at my, uh, I'm only 24, but if I was even older than that, I would imagine that all those experiences just helped me realize, okay, the worst thing that can happen is this, whereas before, when you're in college and you fail that class, your world is ending yeah. because either you're paying for it, your parents are paying for it, they're going to get angry at you. You feel like a failure because all your friends are going to stay on track to graduate. So now you feel like a failure. Um, I'm going to get cut from the baseball team because I failed my class. So all these external stresses come out and, 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 and we don't have the resources. So like you said, as advisors, that predictive intervention is critical, and it's yeah. and it, it happens to the best to the to the best people I know. It happens yeah. to me. Yeah, for sure. So next week we are going to talk about predictive interventions. Um, I'm going to give some examples. Not you're not going to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. Um, we're going to give some examples of things that you can know are coming and how you and your team can build out goals and interventions so that you can address those things before they become serious problems. Um, but I think the action item coming out of this conversation today, specifically as we're thinking about getting centered and concentrating is understanding, you know, when I did career counseling, there's two kinds of people. There are people who are stressed out before the decision is made, and there are people who are stressed out after the decision is made. And it's all about whether or not you want room to maneuver. So some people are like, um, okay, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm thinking about it all the time. As soon as the decision is made, all of the anxiety is released. And they're like, okay, I'm good now, right? And then there's other people, I happen to be like this, where I'm like, flexibility. I want adaptability. I want to be able to maneuver and move. And once I'm locked into something, that's when I start to feel stress and anxiety. Because I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't, I, I can't move around anymore. So the action item out of this conversation is to know as you're setting goals for you individually, for your team, uh, for your students, where are the places where you get stuck? Where's the place where you're like, I can't commit to doing that in six months, but I can do it today. Or I need more time to think about that. I know you're ready to move, but I need a little bit of time to, to kind of get ready. And then to be able to talk with your teammates about creating those goals, using each other's strengths and recognizing the places where maybe you have some anxiety or you feel stressed out. So I think having a common language to address that um, push-pull of teammates making goals for new initiatives for the fall. And I see this all the time with implementation. I have some schools that are like, we're going to implement over the next year. And I'm like, or we could just implement today right? Um, or we could just, you could start using it today. That would be great. So that push pull and having the right language for that, I think is going to be really helpful as we're thinking about our, well, well, it's, it's like, we're talking about contracts, business contracts, right? There's some people that sign a contract takes them four years to get to the contract. There's some uh, companies that sign it in two months, a week or, or four months. It's like, so we can wait six months and eight months yeah. and analyze this thing, or we can just do it now, whatever yeah. you want to do. Let's just, let's just get it done. So um, I think that will be a really good thing for people to be thinking about over the next week. And then, like I said, next week, I'm going to talk about really specifically those predicted interventions or different elements that you're going to see with your students. And I'm going to give you worksheets on how you can go through and fill those out so that you can start the semester in a head start, which I always really like. So, um, hey, thanks for spending time with me. Cool. Now I know Thank you, you, put for having socks, me. you put your socks on first and then your shoes. Now I know. Yeah, and um, I put my hat on before I put my jacket on. Is that true? Yes. Learn something else, Anthony. But you're, not only not only you learn something else, you're like, there's a meaning there. What does that mean? Yeah, like, I got to think about like, that a little bit. I didn't even I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, <laughs> what? Wait, why would you put your hat on before you put your jacket on? Do like you you're confused. Good, do you have a good reason? <laughs> Because I have a bald head and I like to get it warm as fast as possible. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. <laughs> yeah, you know, you notice I took I took my fur off my face. My yeah. wife's disappointed about my wife's disappointed about that. Oh, she is. She liked it. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I'm just not. A, I like a beard. I'll have a beard again, but I'm just not. I'm not a maintaining hanging out with a beard. <laughs> that kind of guy. 
<laughs> because one little hair goes this way and it drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, that, I know that that would drive. Um, all right. Well, so what is the next thing that you are looking forward to, Anthony? Continuing to live in gratefulness. Like I don't have, I just want my kids to be happy. And I just want everything my kids are doing right now to lead to something better and I want them to be happy and I want to just enjoy everything that's around me I don't I just don't have that many goals like I I just I I have so many things that I'm so grateful for and I have so many things happening but I just like I don't need something to happen I just need everyone in my circle to just everybody be happy that's that yeah. really I mean I couldn't have answered it 20 years ago 10 years ago even five years ago now it's just like listen I'm not done by a long shot you know I, I can't retire and just go to sleep. I got you know too many challenges in business and responsibilities to people. Yeah. But um I just I just feel, you know, it's like just I just don't want to wear a mask anymore. So I'm grateful for not wearing a mask. Amen to that. I am so grateful for that. All right. Well good to spend time with you. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Enjoy your um all your flights. Yes <laughs> I will and um I have it on my schedule to be at your next birthday party. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. I'll, <laughs> I'll alleviate my daughter's stress about that. <laughs>